Okay, so here I am with the Ledger Blue. Let's just take a look at what comes in the box itself. Uh, so you open it up. Now I've already opened this up, so I have it already in the little case that is provided. You have this little slip for it. And this is the device itself. Uh, just for comparison, this is a Galaxy Edge S7. Uh, so just for size, so you can kind of see. Um, yeah, and the only thing on this, it's a, it's a touch screen, and on the side here, there's a single button for the on and off. The rest is all touch, for, touch screen functions here. Um, inside the box, you pull it up, you've got your USB cable to connect to your computer, and uh, you've got this little packet here. There's a few things inside. This just lets you know that uh, the device itself is designed to be tamper-proof. Um, this is the recovery sheet. I'm not going to flip this over because this contains my recovery seed, a series of 24 words as a, a backup in case I lose or destroy my device. And uh, this little sheet that gives you the getting started page, which is start.ledgerwallet.com. A lot of good information uh, there, and it did help me quite a bit in getting this thing set up and figuring out how everything works. And that's it, that's what comes in the box there. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual setup to get your device ready to use. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the button on the side, I'm gonna hold it down for a moment and that will switch it on. You're gonna get your intro screen here. Maybe I'll turn down the brightness. Sorry, I had to adjust my brightness there. Uh, so when you first turn on your device, you're gonna see the screen and you can configure as a new device or down below it says, sorry. It says restore configuration, which would mean entering your old phrase from perhaps another device, from your Ledger Nano S, or if you happen to have this device before, but you lost it, broke it, wiped it, whatever you happen to do, you can input your 24 word seed phrase here to recover your money. Uh, so just so you can see what it looks like, when I say configure as a new device, uh, it's gonna ask me for a pin number. I'm gonna input that twice, and then it's gonna give me a list of 20 24 words that I write down and it will check two of those words uh, to see that I have written them down correctly. Uh, but this is not what I actually want to do. I would much prefer to load up, uh, so I'm going to abort that, I'm going to go back, I'm going to actually enter my 24 word phrase which I have done previously. So I'm going to hit the second option here. And I first it asked me again to put in a pin, so I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna enter my 24 words. I'll show you what that looks like uh, off screen here, and I, I am just entering my pin quickly. Okay, and then it's gonna select, I have to select the number of recovery words to restore my device. Now, I made this account with this specific device before, which defaults to 24 words, but uh, depending on the wallet you used before, it may be 18 or 12 words. I'm going to hit 24, and here it's just going to ask me to input my words one by one, which I will do, and I will be back after I have done that. Okay, so I've now re-entered my 24 word seed phrase, and I've gotta say, this was the easiest device to do this on I've experienced to date, uh, just because of the nature of having a touch screen and a full keyboard. Uh, most other devices you're dealing with, either one or two buttons, and it can be quite a pain to recover a wallet. This one was a snap, and not only that, it started to auto-complete the words for me, uh, which most other devices do, but um, this one happens to do it particularly well, especially when you have a keyboard available to you. So to get started, I just hit the start button and immediately you're going to see that you have a series of apps here that are for various currencies and other things. So you have uh, Bitcoin, Dash, Ethereum, Fido, U2F, Litecoin, Ripple, and your settings button. So all of those are currencies except for Fido, U2F. Uh, that is something called second, uh, two-factor authentication um, and it just allows you to have a secondary layer of security on accounts like your Facebook, Google, Dropbox, anything like that. So uh, I'm not going to be covering that in this video but it is a feature that this enables. Now really quick before I get into anything else I just want to touch on the settings here. There's one thing that people are going to find right away 
and it's that this device times out rather quickly by default and what I mean is the screen turns off and then asks you for your pin number uh, within 30 seconds. So um, when you go to settings, that's all it is about. It's You have your brightness, but then you have your auto lock and your power off. So I, by default, I set mine to the maximum, which is five minutes, and it just uh, it just stops it from timing out and having to re-enter my pin number because when I am plugged into my computer, that logs me out of the actual app itself, and that can be annoying. Uh, so once you bump that up, then you're safe. Uh, the other thing, I turn the power off delay to the maximum as well, uh, to 10 minutes, because I just don't want this device shutting off. I don't want to have to repower it on uh, when I'm in the midst of using it. And lastly, down at the bottom, you have the option to check out your firmware and see what version uh, of the operating system you are currently running, and then you can, uh, you can update it if you like when you are plugged into a computer accessing the internet. But yeah, you can hit the, the top right button. By the way, when you're in settings, to get back to your main screen, the top right button, there's a little square. You can tap it, and you go right back to your main screen with all of your currencies and your two-factor authentication. Okay, now beyond setting the device up itself, you're going to have to do something on your actual computer. And that is get the supporting apps for whatever you wish to use this device for. Okay, so you have some options here. You can either get Chrome extensions installed on your Chrome browser. Uh, so right now I'm in the Chrome Web Store. If you're unsure what this looks like, when you're on your Chrome browser, there's a little tab that says Apps. Uh, and you can go here, you can hit the Web Store. And if you type in Ledger in the search, uh, and then pick apps it will show you it'll be near the top here uh, these are the three apps that you can have installed in your Chrome browser the ledger manager the ledger wallet ethereum and the ledger wallet Bitcoin uh, you can also head over to the ledger website ledgerwallet.com slash apps and this allows you to download them as individual apps on your computer as well okay so you can get same thing uh, Bitcoin and altcoins this one is entitled and you'll see why in a moment uh, ledger wallet ethereum now this one you can only get as an app on your computer not within your Chrome browser it's the ledger wallet ripple and then over here you have ledger manager and ledger authenticator I'm not going to be covering that in this video but in a future video I will so all you're gonna to need to do is download uh, for sure the ledger wallet Bitcoin and altcoins um, and then likely the ledger manager and if you're gonna be using ethereum or ripple you, you'll probably want these as well so that's that's all you're gonna need you can download those and use them as individual apps on your computer Okay, so before I get into actually uh, showing how to do a transaction here, let's take a look at just a couple of these apps and how they work. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to plug in the USB to the bottom of the device. I'm going to plug this into my computer via USB cable. Now when I do that, it asks me for my pin immediately, so I'm just going to put this in off screen. And so I'm now into my wallet here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to uh, my apps and my Chrome browser. Uh, so I'm going to hit apps here. And let's take a look first at the ledger manager. Okay. So you have to be on the main screen of your ledger blue in order to access the ledger manager. So just make sure you're not actually tapped on one of these uh, individual wallets. So I hit the ledger manager. And it's going to go and open up as an individual app in its own window. And this is where you can add and remove applications from your device. So you can add a, say, a Bitcoin Cash wallet. You could remove your Dash wallet. You could add a Dogecoin wallet. You could do all these different things. These are the available apps that you can install on your device at the moment. Uh, but they are constantly adding more. So 
pretty simple. Uh, this is also where you can go ahead and you can update your firmware. Right now there's no items to display because I'm, I'm already up to date. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much what the ledger manager does. Now let's go ahead and take a look at any of these other apps. So here I want to go into my ledger wallet Bitcoin. Okay, so I open that up. It's going to ask me to connect my Ledger wallet. Now it is connected here, right? But I need to actually select what wallet I'm using. So the Bitcoin wallet is good for Bitcoin and other altcoins except for Ethereum and Ripple. So if I were to hit Dash here, uh, it's going to open up my Dash wallet on my desktop. Okay, it takes a moment to synchronize. But then once it does, it'll show my Dash account. And this is pretty much basic across all of the individual apps. You have your accounts, you have send and receive, you have your settings for the wallet itself, and you can add accounts, and so on and so forth. Uh, so not a lot to see here. Uh, if you go into your settings, you can do things like, um, you know, do I want uh, US dollars? Well, no, I'm in Canada, so I'm gonna change it to my secondary currency is Canadian dollars. So I can switch that over. I can change my language, my region, so on and so forth. And if there are subunits, like in Bitcoin, some people use millibits or bits, you can change that here as well. So I'm gonna close out of that. I'm gonna close this app. And to get back to my main screen on my Ledger Wallet Blue, I'm going to tap the top right corner, the little square, and here I am. Now, conversely, I have also downloaded the Ripple Wallet. So here on my desktop, I can go to my applications, and you can see it's a standalone app. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so it's a standalone app. It's not within my Chrome browser, and I could do this with any of these apps. Uh, so I can open that up individually, separate from my Chrome browser, and then on my device, I go, I hit Ripple, and it opens up my Ripple wallet. Now it does look a little bit different on the desktop here. Same basic functions, you still got send and receive, it just doesn't say that underneath the arrows. Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much it. It also doesn't have a lot of settings here, so it's a little bit more stripped down. Um, and let's just take a look really quick at the Ethereum wallet as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go over back to my Chrome apps because that's where I have it. I'll hit Ledger Wallet Ethereum. On my device, I went back to my main screen, and I need to tap on Ethereum. Okay, and now here on the Ethereum app, now this is why Ethereum is separate, uh, because there's two chains that are basically the exact same technology. You've got Ethereum Classic and regular Ethereum. So you can choose between the two. You can hit Remember My Choice if you're primarily going to be using just one, or you can click in one. Uh, it will open your wallet just the same as it would with any other currency, uh, and then up top, here where it says ETH for regular Ethereum, you can hit switch and it'll take you back to the main screen. You can hit Ethereum Classic if that is the currency you choose to use. And that's pretty much it for the Ethereum wallet. Okay, lastly, what we are going to do is a demo transaction of how to receive and send funds from any of your wallets. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into my Chrome apps and I'm going to hit Ledger Wallet Bitcoin because I'm going to do a Bitcoin transaction here. It opens up as its own individual wallet and remember it's going to ask me to connect my wallet. It is connected but I need to hit the app that I want to use which is my Bitcoin wallet. Okay. Now, you can see here I've already done a couple transactions just to test this out for myself uh, but it's pretty basic. Um, all you've got here is if you want to receive, which I'm going to receive for this transaction, is you hit the receive button up in the top left, and it's going to give you uh, how much you'd like, if you'd like to request a specific amount, you can put that in here. Uh, I'm just gonna send directly from my phone. It gives you a Bitcoin address. Now, if you wanted to message that or email that to somebody, you could select it all, and you could copy it, and then paste it into an email if you choose, uh, or you can just get somebody to scan this QR code or send that as a picture, take a screenshot. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna scan it with my phone. 
uh, I've got uh, my mycelium wallet open here. So I'm just going to scan that QR code. 200 Canadian dollars. And I'm gonna hit send. I'll do my pin number off screen. Okay, so that has been sent. And if I close out of this, uh, I can see that a new transaction has just come through just a moment ago, right here. I can click on it and get all the details, where it went to, uh, the amount that was sent, so on and so forth, uh, what address it came from, all of that. Uh, so that is it for receiving. That's as simple as it gets. You can you can scan the QR code or you can send somebody this address to send to. Uh, so I will now just wait for this transaction to confirm and I will show you guys how to send it out. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, the transaction has now gone through and so now I'm gonna practice sending it out of this wallet. Nice and simple. I'm gonna go to the send button up in the top left. Hit that. It's gonna ask me how much I want to send. Uh, for now, rather than manually putting that in, I'm gonna send the maximum amount back out. Okay, now it's gonna ask for the recipient Bitcoin address. Now there's two ways to put this in. You can copy it from a source, maybe a private message or an email, whatever you like, uh, and paste it in. Or you can hit this little camera in the bottom left corner and that will open up your webcam at which point you can hold up a, uh, a wallet to your screen and it will scan the QR code and send to that address. Now for myself, I've already copied a, an address that I've sent to myself via Messenger, so I'm just gonna paste that in right here. Uh, I choose the account that it wants to come out of. This is the account I want it to come out from. Otherwise, I would hit a little drop down menu here and it would show me my other accounts that I could choose from. Uh, and then last here, you see transaction fees. You can choose what kind of transaction fee you'd like. Okay, so here I am going to choose, well, I don't really care how long it takes, so I'm gonna hit low. Now, lately, these transactions have been going through just fine, um, so I'm not worried about doing a low, a low transaction fee. You can even hit custom, and you can put in the number of satoshis per byte. But if that sounds like Greek to you, then you better just pick one of these options here. So I'm going to hit low, and I'm going to hit send. It verifies. Now, right here, this is the last step. It shows you on the screen all your transaction details and you just get to pick on the device whether you reject or confirm this transaction. So I'm going to hit confirm and off it goes on my computer, sending succeeded. And now that I've sent from the account to back to my phone, I can pick up my mycelium wallet and check that the transaction has come in. Uh, now there's just one other thing I'd like to take a look at here and that is uh, related to where it says up top here current chain Bitcoin SegWit. So this was an option that I first was given when I initially set up the device and you may be unfamiliar with what that is. So uh, we're just going to hit the settings tab here and here you see in the bottom right there's an option that says blockchains okay so here you have the choice between using Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash all right this was a split of Bitcoin that happened on August 1st I steal I still deal with only Bitcoin but some people do hold Bitcoin cash which is an entirely separate currency so you can choose to use that one as well. This is how you would do it. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna hit Bitcoin. And then this is the other option you're gonna be presented with when first setting up this wallet. Uh, it says, choose your address type. Would you like legacy or SegWit? Uh, or you can pick, I don't know. If you, if you don't know, then uh, you can hit that. But uh, the long and the short of it is, for cheaper transaction fees, you can use SegWit. Now, normally you would be able to use your Ledger device with the Mycelium wallet, uh, but in this case, uh, Mycelium 
at the time of making this video uh, is not capable of handling SegWit transactions. So that may be a sticking point for some people, but for me, I do not mind using my computer for transactions because these are long, meant to be long-term holdings for myself anyways. My Ledger Nano S I've kept as uh, legacy for some of my accounts just so I can use them with my phone as well. Anyways, that's what these options are. So I'll hit SegWit and you can go back in and you can see uh, my transactions sitting here and that is it that are those are the ins and outs of your ledger blue uh, I'm very happy with this uh, with this device it is much easier to use than um, well, pretty much every other hardware wallet I have, including the Ledger Nano S, uh, just because of the touchscreen, that that versatility of being able to use an actual keyboard versus trying to tap on one or two buttons depending on the device, it does help quite a bit. That being said, the form factor, it's a little bit larger, so maybe it's not something you want to carry around with you every day. Um, for long-term storage, maybe you could store it at home and have it as an easy device to access, but I guess it's all personal preference. Either way, I highly recommend this thing. It is absolutely fantastic, and I think, I'm gonna say this probably takes top spot for me as far as uh, ease of use and usability. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to be using this thing a lot.